Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Mazzy here. Happy New Year again. Whack-a-mole number 152, the first whack-a-mole of 2023. Uh, these are the series of videos where I randomly pull five albums from my collection and just give you a little uh, background of what the records mean to me or what they are about, what they are. Uh, totally random, totally off the top of my head, and I uh, just love coming down in my library here, this wonderful array and <laughs> of records so let's have it let's have at it um i'm this time since i just need to kind of limber up i'm not going to do the wall here facing me this is the jazz wall and the beatles wall so you're not going to get any jazz this time but this is just pretty much almost everything else so let's go here one Two, three, not looking, four, it's not as easy as you think, it, you have to really be limber, like, right, and five. Okay, there we go, see, I didn't look, I didn't peek. Now, of course, someone's going to say, oh, you put them down and you swapped them out, I don't swap them out. Oh. Sufjan Stevens, um, this is my favorite album of him. Uh, I first got into him of a series of uh, records he made. He, st he almost started, I thought he was going to do every friggin' state, did an album on Illinois, and it did, he did a, a th sort of thematic musical movement uh, of different states, and he's got a wonderful tenor voice, really a sweet voice, uh, but this is a deeper record for a lot of reasons. This is called Carrie and... and Lowell. Uh, this is autobiographical about his family, his mother and father. And I think this is his very best album. And I love the mood to this record. Uh, the personal journey and the, you know, the good, bad and the ugly of family life and, and having parents. So um, 2015, Sufjan Stevens. Stevens. <sighs> what label is this on? Does it matter? We're talking about labels. You want to know? Asthmatic Kitty Records. Is that his own self-absorbed label? I don't know. Fantastic record. And um, I haven't played this in a while, so this will be fun to play. Okay. Next. Ooh, okay. Suzanne Vega, Solitude Standing. Uh, of course, this has her big breakout single, uh, Luca. My name is Luca. I live on the second floor. Uh, a song about... Um, about you know, child battering children and a, a abused uh, boy. And, and it's it's amazing that the subject matter became this huge hit on MTV uh, and really kind of solidified her. Now, this is, is this her second or third record? I love Suzanne Vega. I followed her entire career. I know uh, for a while she was married to Mitch, Mitchell Froome, who produced several of her records, that it really crossed over on it. There was a period in the late 80s that her records had a certain electronic modern uh, tinge to it. She's sort of a folk art. She's a folk artist to begin with. Great acoustic guitar playing, a great light voice. Uh, lately, she's been doing uh, on the Upper East Side in New York in the um, Wissa Hotel, like where Woody Allen was playing with his jazz band there in that lounge, uh, the um, Carlisle Hotel in that room. I've been in that room. I've seen Woody Allen there. She did a series of live things there. And just a big fan. There's an album that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, but Suzanne Vega, I, I saw her once live, and that was at the Warfield Theater around the time of this album. Uh, just just really good music. All her records, uh, there's something really wonderful about it. Again, I love her voice, Suzanne Vega, out of New York. Huh. My favorite band, in my top three favorite bands, The Kinks. Now, Everyone has their taste of the kinks, obviously. Starting with You Really Got Me, that was on Pi in the UK and Reprise in America. That really rock and sound that, you know, punk and heavy metal artists really clung on to for so long. But because of their their time when uh, they got banned from the US from, I'm thinking around 65 or 6 through 69, because of union situations and an altercation that happened uh, in the United States. Ray Davis really kind of 
started writing more about personal things and London life and mundane London life. And, um, yeah, it's just middle class London life. I'm like tripping over my lips here. Not, I'm not articulating this very well, but he did a series of, of records, uh, you know, the tail end of the thing, also writing about uh, Arthur is one of my favorite records, writing about the Victorian era of England, uh, English life, English, <laughs> English life. God, I'm really, I'm really busting this one, uh, not really doing well. But anyway, I digress. They go to RCA Records uh, after Reprise Records and after Pi Records, and they start doing these more theatrical uh, records. Uh, first, well, at first they do Muswell Hill Billy, which is one of my favorite records, which is really about Muswell Hill in Northern uh, London. And I love that record. And it's got sort of a, a, a country, a very Americana, before we even call it Americana sound, little New Orleans with the horns and the, just a, a great record. And of course, uh, the, um, Celluloid Heroes album, the double uh, Everybody's in Showbiz record. One record live, songs from Muswell, and one uh, of new studio material at the time, which is a fantastic record. Love the RCA stuff. But then he started doing these more esoteric, theatrical, almost like off-Broadway plays with um, soap opera, one I particularly love, and Schoolboys in Disgrace. I did see this tour when they dressed up literally in these schoolboy outfits. And I would... I argue that all these records have some great rock and roll tunes and some great melodies of Ray's and Dave Davis's uh, music. Uh, Jack the Indian Dunn's Education, School Days, I'm in Disgrace. Great rocker. Um, th I would say I like soap opera better, but I think more people into the rock vein like this one better. They're back to bat records, which is 73 or 4, 1975. Oh, God, that late. But uh, Schoolboys in Disgrace, a favorite uh, of mine of this RCA theatrical period. Now, I went a long, sort of a long, <laughs> convoluted overview of that. But this is for fun, and this is, again, off the top of my head, which most of my records are. Uh, this is actually an audiophile version. Uh, Analog Productions did this really great version, double 45, of a... Of, of a wonderful record by the Cowboy Junkies. And this record, I, I, this is the first record that I got into with them, and I followed them for a long time. I saw them several times live. Uh, this is where they actually had some amazing slow cover uh, songs, including Sweet Jane, uh, obviously the um, Lou Reed song, Velvet Underground Lou Reed song. And uh, what else is on here? Blue Moon, a copy of that too, uh, a cover of that too. And Walking After Midnight, which is a cover. I think that was added uh, to this version of the record. I don't think it was on the original. I don't recall. Uh, I got this originally during the CD era. This is a gorgeous record. And Cowboy Junkies, if you don't know them, their name really reflects the sound of their music. They're, they're in a way folk country, alternative, indie. But, but they had this really so slow, slower than almost any other artist I know in that vein of, um, you know, they're not dream pop at all, but they're as slow as some dream pop as a Mazzy star. Again, nothing uh, related musically or audio wise to, to Mazzy star, but they got this soothing sound. And of course, uh, the brother, sister, uh, two brothers and a sister, Peter Timmons, Michael Timmons on guitar, Peter's on drums and Margot Timmons on vocals are sort of the core of the group. Uh, but this is a wonderful record. The first time I saw them was at the Great American Music Hall. And I wanted to say that is one of the best sounding live shows I've ever seen. They played so soft and it was like listening to the best stereo uh, setup that you have in a perfectly acoustically treated room. They were amazing. You could hear a needle drop. The audience was quiet. And this is the kind of audience, the downstairs front area, cocktail tables. And I was standing around uh, the peripheral, peripheral peripheral, area of the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco, a building that used to be a brothel and a speakeasy. 
and it's just a great place to see music in San Francisco. Uh, but this is a really good a version of this, I believe. It goes in and out of print, but if you can find this album in any ways, if you haven't heard it, you owe it yourself to hear it because it's a gorgeous album, really wonderful. And lastly, in this section, oh, to me, this is the, this represents uh, the lockdown time during the pandemic of any record because it's, it's a soothing record, it's a lonely record, and it's some of the best songwriting, one of my favorite artists of all time, and that's Nick Cave's Idiot Prayer, Nick Cave alone at the Alexandra Palace. I watched this uh, with the archivist during lockdown, and there was a pay-per-view event where he played. It was pre-filmed, uh, pre-recorded, and then they broadcasted it live initially at one point. And then later in the year or the following year, uh, they put out this double LP. I think there's a video obviously available too. Nick Cave at a piano along pl playing some of those beautiful songs. Uh, you know, I think at one point he stops and starts and kind of cracks himself up. But the mood of this and the beauty of the recording and the wonderfully shot cinematic experience of him walking into this building in the long hallway and sitting down at the piano and of course, it has uh, songs like uh, Brompton Oratory, uh, which is one of my favorite songs uh, from Boatman's Call, which is my favorite Nick Cave album, Jubilee Street, Strangers Than Kindness, Into My Arms, another great song from Boatman's Call. Such a personal record, such an emotional record. Again, because of the time, the situation a lot of us were in, around the world. Uh, this to me is the record that I'll always go back to in, in years to come and remember this time, this sort of tumultuous time that, um, you know, it was hard for a lot of people, obviously, and, and still is. There's residual effects of this, but this is um, one of my favorite Nick Cave albums because it is intimate. It's not one of the loud, raucous Nick Cave and the Bad Seas records. So uh, that is Idiot Prayer Nick Cave, live alone to the piano. So thank you for watching this first whack-a-mole of 2023. More to come, a lot more content to come. Hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching. And Mazzy loves you. I never, I never know where to point my fingers.